Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, welcome to this NPTEL massive online open course. This course is on phonetics and phonology, a broad overview. So, uh, we have talked a lot about segments, about uh, sounds, about consonants, vowels, and uh, rules, and also the acoustics of uh, consonants and vowels, that is, individual segments. So, now in this part of the course, we look at uh, the phonology of units which are not exactly se segments, which are more than, which constitute material which, which is not just uh, one sound, which is, which constitutes more than one, one sound. And uh, when we talk about that, we have, when we are talking about that, we, we talked about syllables in the last class. In the last lecture, you had seen that how the syllable is the nucleus of um, uh, of the unit uh, of the unit syllable, and then you have onset and coda, and how you have various rules of assignment of uh, onset and coda. Now, uh, we today we talk about another aspect of the syllable, which is a stress, and stress rules and syllable weight. So, uh, when we talk about stress, stress involves the force or intensity with which a syllable is uttered. So. So, stress is inherently about uh, something which is in a syllable. So, uh, stress is detectable from the many effects it has on segments uh, since it appears in environmental segmental rules, but um, it is always considered to be a part of a syllable. So, uh, when we talk about stress, there are some inherent general properties of stress that we always have to keep in mind. Number one is that of culminativity. So, what does culminativity mean? It means that in most stress languages, every word has exactly one main stress. So, it has to have the property where it, where, where the, um, the intensity has to culminate in one uh, part of a word. So, and that is, that is called the principle of culminativity. And stress is culminative in, in each, each word culminates in one main stress syllable, which is the which should could uh, which can be called prominent, which can be called stress, which can be called accented, but it has to the uh, uh, the that stress syllable has to have the property of culminativity. So, by the principle of culminativity, uh, for instance, monosyllabic words like dog, cat, and horse are possible words in English, but a stressless form like uh, something like b would not be uh, a, a possible word in English. So, uh, one exception to the principle of culminativity like uh, grammatical words such as articles, pronouns, prepositions and auxiliary verbs are often stressless. Example, the word uh, the in the book, in, in, in the, uh, the phrase, the noun phrase, the book. So, uh, grammatical words prosodically lean on content words. So, uh, if uh, those, uh, if there are grammatical words, then they almost necessarily they will need content words to um, exist in any um, grammatically uh, meaningful form. So, um, the other properties uh, include that uh, it is, um, as we just said, the stress is a property of syllables. That is, the units that can be stressed or stressless are syllables, and they are not segments. And the reason is that there are no contrasts of stress within the syllable. And if a syllable is, uh, contains a diphthong, it is impossible for a language to have a contrast involving stressing the first half versus the second half of the diphthong. So, uh, th and if we have examples here, 
there are only three stress ways of stressing the trisyllable we have here is pataima where obviously because they are three syllables the, these are the three possibilities that we have. So, we either have stress on the initial syllable or stress on the middle syllable, stress on the final syllable. And uh, stressing uh, but ima is not possible unless there are four syllables pata ima. So, um, so uh, the issue is if this has to be stressed then this will be a syllable on its own. And uh, the adopted representations we attach uh, the feature stress to syllables rather than to vowels. So, that is what we meant by um, uh, by saying that stress is inherently a part of syllables, it is not a part of segments. So, stress therefore, if we have if we have stress on this uh, and then if we have in this if we have stress on thai then this is to be the stress syllable and this is to be the stress syllable if it is if stress is here. So, it is a property of the syllable and if at all the stress is on this vowel then this uh, will become a four syllable word pata ima. Okay. Now, uh, other general properties um, that um, constitute stress uh, in a language is the property of uh, fixed versus free, st free stress. So, stress can be phonemic where it uh, cannot be predicted and there are minimal or near minimal pairs example Spanish uh, sa savana versus savana. So, versus sa uh, where we have the stress here or va if we have the stress here. So, so, we have um, a minimal pair almost where with exactly the same uh, constituents uh, phonemic phonemes um, which, comp which compose the word, but then the stress is on different locations in the word and that is why stress is phonemic. So, um, which means that the stress cannot be just anywhere in Spanish, it, it has to have uh, it, the stress is uh, it to some extent determined by uh, the word. English, Russian, Ilocano and many other languages have phonemic stress. And stress can be also be predictable in languages. For instance, language like Polish which always has penultimate stress or French which, uh, which has final stress. And free stress means phonemic stress and fixed stress means predictable stress. So, um, phonemic stress in language of phonemic stress and there will be a large component of um, large amount of words in the language where stress will not be predetermined and, and it will be um, and stress will be based on um, um, on some aspect of um, the word. For instance, in, um, in English we have uh, noun verb pairs where stress is different based on uh, if it is initial then um, it is a noun, if it is in the if it is in the second part of the word then um, it is a verb. So, we have those noun verb pairs in English and we saw the, the Spanish examples and in those languages we have phonemic stress, but in, uh, in there are lots of languages where stress is predictable and it will always be in one particular position. So, even in languages where stress is phonemic there are tendencies and limitations in stress placement. And uh, so, uh, where stress is predictable, it can be it can be characterized by deriving it with phonological rules. So Polish stress is almost entirely predictable. So Polish stress is uh, is um, penultimate. So as a result, whenever you have more morphemes added to a word, then um, the position of the stress syllable will change. It will always be on the penultimate syllable. So, penultimate stress and here um, it is here and it is always penultimate if it is um, yeah. So, uh, we have penultimate stress, we have a vowel counting. Uh, so, if we have a vowel counting version then if um, the, uh, the stress vowel will be the one which is in the penultimate position. So, this is the final, this is the penultimate stress is always here. Okay. 
this is our stress position. What, and what is this language? This is Polish. Assign stress to the second to last vowel in the word. So, in order to limit contrast, it is, it's, it is appropriate to assign stress to syllables, not to vowels. And therefore, um, penultimate stress, uh, whereas we here, we, we, we said that it is a property of the vowel. Here, as you can see, we are saying that it is a property of the syllable. Syllable is plus stress if, it's, if it is before a word final position. So, assign stress to the second to last um, syllable in the word. We assume that syllables always surface as stressless unless they are assigned stress by rule. So, um, so as, as they come to the derivation, it is assumed that um, it is not stressed and once the, the, the rules start applying, then the, rule of the rules of stress will apply to the language and uh, so they do not come to the derivation already bearing the stress, but stress is a result of phonological rules. The syllabification algorithm automatically assigns a value minus stress to syllables when they are created. So, as we just said, when you have the derivative, when the when they come to derivation in the underlying form, then there is no stress, and then we have the stress rules applying. So this is the underlying form, and then we have the stress rules applying. And so we have um, televisor syllabification with, uh, with this, so as you see, uh, no stress. And then the penultimate stress rule is matched up to this form. So uh, then the stress rule says, okay, there is an underlying form. The stress has to be assigned. Which is the stress syllable? What is the stress syllable going to be? So the phonological rules of, fa of Polish will say assign rule, assign stress to the penultimate syllables. Hence, we have your um, stress syllable here as a result of the phonological rule application. So, Polish has monosyllabic words which get stressed and these words do not have a penultimate syllable obviously because they are monosyllabic and they do not match up to the rule and thus should not get stressed at all. So, since penultimate stress is impossible, the language settles for final stress. Uh, so, in this language in Polish, if the penultimate syllable is not available and when is it not available? When there are uh, then when there are words which uh, do not satisfy the condition of, of having a penultimate position, you will not have a penultimate position if there is only one syllable in the word that is a monosyllabic, then the, the algorithm settles for something, uh, whatever syllable is available there, the only syllable avail available is the uh, one which will be stressed. By adopting a pattern which involves a special use of parenthesis notation, the Polish rule is written as follows. So, uh, so uh, which means we uh, give uh, with this parenthesis notation, one or more positions can be uh, made subject to that rules of stress assignment. So, syllable will get the syllable is plus stress when it is um, before a word boundary, uh, the syllable before the one. And we, when we parenthesized word is rule is written, both including and excluding the parenthesized material, we obtain what we call its expansions. So, uh, Polish expansions, these are the Polish, uh, so this is the penultimate position and this is the final position and we have an expansion in the sense that if, if the penultimate rule cannot apply, then we have uh, an expansion of the rule to apply in the places where the penultimate rule cannot apply. The longer expansion can be used to assign penultimate stress to words with two or more syllables. And whereas a shorter expansion will be used to derive stress on monosyllables. So these are called the two expansions. And uh, conventions on application of stress rules containing parentheses, uh, the longest first. If a stress rule includes an expression in parentheses, the longest expansions must be tried first. So as a result, when a stress rule is applied under some expansion, all remaining expansions are skipped. S and um, the, the longest, which means um, it was, it, it, uh, so um, I have to also mention the blockage par part. So there is the longest first. So if the stress rule um, has an expression in parenthesis, then um, the longest expansion must be tried first. So um, and if the longest is 
whereas the short expansion will be used to derive stress on monosyllables. So, when the as we said before, when the penultimate stress uh, expansion is not possible, then the shorter expansion of the word final will be applied to monosyllables. And um, and longest and blockage, which we um, uh, which we want to explain, uh, when a stress rule is applied under some expansion, all expansions are, all remaining expansions are skipped. So, and um, when it is applied, when at, at the time of application of one expansion, the other expansions are skipped. So then they do not apply at the same time. Uh, if uh, a completeness, if a stress rule cannot apply in a longer expansion, then the longest available remaining expansion must be tried next. So, uh, in the Polish case, the first expansion is longest and therefore must be tried first. So, we have the longest expansion of uh, which says uh, that it is a penultimate syllable and then we have this the blockage provision uh, which terminates the application of the stress rule. So, uh, it the, the blockage terminates the, the application of the stress rule, the penultimate rule applies. So, we have our stress on the uh, penultimate syllable in uh, televisor. In many languages, stress can fall on several syllables of a word. One primary stress and in longer words or one or more secondary stresses. And the pattern in which every other syllable is stressed is called alternating stress example, the example of Warao, uh, a language of Venezuela. So, we have 8 syllables, 8 syllables and 5 syllables. Um, so, um, if a language is alternating stress, then it will try to skip one syllable and then assign stress to the other syllable and that process will go on till it meets its end. And so, we have uh, syllables, uh, long syllable words of from Warao. Here, we have 3 examples, 2 with 8 syllables each and the last one with 5 syllables. So, uh, what happens in Warao? Warao has penultimate main stress and a train of alternating secondary stresses going from right to left across the word. So, stress assignment happens from the right edge. To accommodate the distinction between primary and secondary stress, we add the feature main. So, primary stress syllables are plus main and plus stress and secondary stress syllables are minus main and plus stress. So, they do not have the main stress, but they do indeed have some stress. And stressless syllables are uh, both minus main and minus stress. Uh, what are our primary stress? So, you assign a primary main that is the main stress, primary stress to the and, and uh, to the pen, penultimate syllable. And after writing a rule with an unlimited number of secondary stresses, after, um, after that um, uh, writing a rule with unlimited number of secondary stresses can be done with iterative rules. So, the basis for iteration is that the rule creates new environments for itself that is it is self feeding. So, uh, that is the property of iterative rules. And so, what happens in Warao secondary stress? We, we have the property of iterative keep on applying the secondary stress to the alternate syllables. Writing a rule with an unlimited number of secondary stresses can be done with iterative rules. The basis for iteration is that the rule creates new environments for itself that is it is self feeding. So, we have Warao secondary stress here where the syllable becomes stressed if it is before the penultimate position and if it is and in alternative uh, and in alternating positions. So, the change specifying plus stress will create secondary stress not primary under the assumption that all syllables start out as main. So, after syllabification, after the stress roll, we will consider that as which has already happened and after that the rules of applying stress, uh, secondary stress will apply. So, they will not apply uh, simultaneously or they will not apply or not cancel each other out. So, we have uh, the underlying form here and the syllabification. Um, so, as we just said primary stress will be assigned to the penultimate syllable fine. Now, um, we have now main stress the primary stress. So, that rule is done. Now, we have to find keep finding our alternating um, stress position. So, we already have one. Uh, we leave out ku which is stressless and proceed 
to the stress before coup, which is minus, uh, which is which is minus main stress, or doesn't even have stress. And then again, we skip this R, and then we have rho and minus, um, and and therefore again, stre secondary stress is signed there. And finally, we leave another leave out another syllable and reach the um, seven syllable, where again stress is assigned because it is assigned from the right edge to the left edge. And what happens to this syllable? This syllable is uh, left out. And so, the primary stress rule assigns the penultimate stress and the secondary stress rule then iterates leftward to assign the remaining stresses. So, secondary stress is self feeding because it assigns a feature value plus feature value plus stress which appears in its own environment. Its own environment is that it has to look for a minus stress, uh, it has to feed the environment that is uh, already so um, minus stress, the uh, main stress has been assigned and then the next step is to assign these iterative um, uh, secondary stresses and then it will keep on feeding till, uh, till it meets the end where there are no alternating uh, minus stress syllables. At the last attempt to apply secondary stress, no stress can be assigned. In many stress languages, stress is sensitive to the distinction called syllable weight. Another important aspect of uh, stress is that of syllable weight. So, in a simple weight distinction, there are heavy and light vowels. And um, what are heavy and light vowels? A heavy syllable, um, heavy and light syllables, heavy and light syllables, a syllable that, what is a heavy syllable? It either ends in a consonant or has a long vowel or diphthong. Those uh, candidates are ideal for being heavy in the sense that they will attract st stress by virtue of being more containing more material than on the, on the right edge of the syllable that is one more consonant. So, if you have two consonant um, consonants in the, in the onset, that normally does not lead to weight. So, light syllable is a syllable that ends in a short vowel. So, this syllable um, uh, called the macron is used to denote a heavy syllable and this syllable called brev is used to denote a light syllable. A closed syllable is one that ends up in a consonant, an open syllable is one that ends in a short vowel or the song. And heavy syllables are intrinsically more prominent than light and in stress systems they tend to be stress attracting. And to identify what is meant by the brave and a macron, we uh, assume a feature plus heavy attached to syllable nodes and assign its value by the syllabification rules. And a closed syllable is one that ends in a consonant and open syllable is one that ends in a vowel or diphthong. And heavy syllables are intrinsically more prominent than lights and in stress systems they tend to be stress attracting. So, recall what I just said that um, a heavy plus heavy syllable, uh, a feature at plus heavy attached to syllable nodes and assign its value by syllabification rules. So, syllable weight. A hypothetical word patap taima would be represented as minus heavy plus heavy, plus heavy and plus heavy. Thus, when the symbols macron and breve appear in rules can be interpreted as plus heavy and minus heavy. Quantitative meter. So, a meter the use of phonological material to embody cognitive, embody conventionalized rhythmic patterns in poetry. A meter in English and many other languages based on stress. So, uh, in other languages, the basis of meter is an ar arrangement of the syllables of a line according to their weight. So, um, classical Persian verse, so the, the world or brother waits for none. So, um, and then we have another example, set thy heart on the creation of the world and it is enough. These the stress pat patterns of these lines are not rhythmic in a way and could not be the basis of meter. So, we do not see rhythmic pattern here. 
or neither do you see rhyth rhythmic pattern here we do not see any rhythmicity in longer words. So, if we do not have stress in longer words then meter what we say by what we mean by meter does not is not applicable. If we syllabify these utterances and classify them into heavies and lights and a, a clear pattern emerges. So, um, when we have when we mark them as heavy and light, so these become heavy. And um, these are the these are the light ones. Meter that makes use of heavy versus light syllable is called quantitative meter. It is found in many languages, both dead and living, and lot of languages which are archaic la languages which are not used anymore also had quantitative meter. So, this is um, quite common in languages. It is found um, and then stress based on syllable weight. Heavy versus light distinction plays a role in stress assignment. So, we have classical Arabic with antepenultimate, penultimate and final. And then we have all these examples of um, Malikatun and Tum and Tabatun and Maktabatuhu. So, we do not have iterative stress here, but we may have something to do with syllable weight. So, uh, and the first step is to syllabify and retranscribe as sequences of syllable weight. One aspect of a classical Arabic syllabification is that VCCV is always divided as VCCV. For example, sa, sa fardu is syllabified and weighted as sa, uh, as sa fardu, okay, where this is the uh, this is the heavy syllable because the long vowel is heavy syllable because the final consonant and uh, whereas this one is the breve and this one is a macron because they have heavy syllables. So, reduce to weight sequences and write justified the data looks like this. And um, this is where you see that um, uh, the stress syllable is, um, is in one position and the stressless uh, vowels is in another position. If the penult is light, then the interpenult gets the stress as in examples A to M. And if the penult is heavy or there are only two pen syllables, then the penult gets stress. So, uh, going back to our diagrams there and, and the data here. So, the data shows that um, there, is no, th there is no iterativity like we saw before or there is no, um, there is no way uh, to understand uh, from the data here. From the data here, uh, after we syllabify, then we have to look at the, uh, the constituents of the uh, syllables as to what qualifies them for stress. So, when we have syllabified and weighted like this, when we have two heavy syllables next to each other, macron and one brave, so uh, what happens? So, we can see that reduced to weight sequences. So, if we have, uh, if we say that the stress is being attracted by the uh, weight sequences and it is on from the right side, then a lot of the data becomes um, easier to understand because a lot of places where you see the macrons are the places where you have um, uh, heavy syllables. If the penult is light, then the antipenult gets stress as in examples A to M. So, in all these cases, um, the penult, the penult gets the stress. 
if the penalty is heavy or there are only two syllables examples s to e it, uh, s to t then the penalty gets stressed if the penalty is heavy and there are only two syllables so if the penalty is heavy and if there are only two syllables then so uh, after having looked at uh, classical arabic stress um, we have to go back to the penult yeah so if the penult is light then the anti penult gets a stress as an examples a to m if the penult is heavy there are only two syllables n to s and uh, so n to s the penult is heavy there are only uh, two syllables and and if the antipenal gets stressed as in then the antipenal gets stressed as in examples a to m so in all these cases not the penult it's the antipenal which gets the stress the penal is light so if the penal is heavy there are only two uh, syllables then the penal gets stress and if the penal is heavy the penal gets stress if the penal is light the anti penal gets the stress and monosyllables like u the final syllable is stressed and to write the rules we start with the longest expansion classical arabic stress the longest expansion is that the syllable will stress will get stress in the and position if the anti penult um, that the anti penult gets stress as in the examples we saw if the penult is light the anti penult gets stress as in the examples a to m and if the penult is heavy the shorter expansion it must assign penultimate stress and final stress so class, classical arabic stress shorter expansions if we if the penult is heavy then it gets the stress so once we have all three expansions we can collapse them together into a single rule covering all cases as follows so if the penult is light then the anti penult gets stress and if the penult is heavy then the penult is stress and the uh, final form of all all these properties can be um, looked at again so this is the original uh, rule that we had seen uh, initially so plus syllabic goes to plus stress if um, if it is plus syllabic and minus long and then if it is a penultimate position or anti penultimate so position it will get um, if it is uh, if it is not long or if it is uh, does not have weight then it will not get stress but if it is heavy it will get stress so that was um, uh, that was that was how we started talking about arabic stress with um, all these examples as you can also see here yeah so uh, we can uh, we th that is the persian example and so this these are the classical arabic examples we wanted to look at the examples again before again we look at the rule so we have uh, we have uh, this one with a uh, stress on the initial syllable and then we have this one uh, we have a final and penult and anti penult so we have anti penult in uh, gas gasar to who and then again in uh, gasar to who and uh, we have stress here again in anti penult in katibun and we have um, we have stress in uh, anti penult here so whenever we have stress in uh, anti penult in example like this then these we see the light syllables there and also whenever we have a heavy as in kasar to we we can see the heavy syllable here so this is these are the examples which we need to see that uh, and these are the rules that are being tried to be expressed as as one rule so so safar to and um kasar to are uh, the other cases where you see 
that the uh, penultimate gets the stress because of being heavy. So again, coming back to our um, uh, notations where we have um, the macron and the prev showing that um, in the penultimate position in all these cases, the macron uh, gets the stress because the um, the the penult gets a stress because the final syllable is uh, light. Okay, so the penult is uh, light. The antepenult gets the stress, and uh, if the penult is heavy, there are only two syllables. Um, then the penult gets the stress, and monosyllables like u, um, the final syllable is stressed. And these three uh, rules of uh, stressing the antepenult, penult, and final is expressed in uh, in one form, in the final form, in like this, which means that a syllable gets stressed in Arabic, if in classical Arabic, if the uh, if it is final, then the final uh, if it is a monosyllable like u, then it's final syllable, then it gets the stress as as in here, and the penult gets the stress if it is heavy, and then the uh, antepenult gets the stress if the penult is light. So, all these three rules are being expressed here. So, classical Arabic case illustrates a general principle involving syllable weight. Heavy syllables uh, tend to attract stress even though they are not invariably stressed. And the stress rule specifies a three syllable window within which stress must fall. The requirements of this window to override the tendency to stress heavy syllables. And the um, the classical Arabic rule also illustrates the simplification in stress we can obtain by using syllable weights. So, uh, whenever we talk about weights, a syllable weight, um, stress always comes into the picture because of the way the stress is stress. It's, uh, if there is weight, then there is weight, and there, there are stress rules um, which lead to us our consideration of of that syllable as having weight. So, it is this simple only because classical Arabic has a very simple syllable structure. Stated in segments, the rule would be um, like this. So, this is the bigger, uh, longer version of the rule plus syllabic uh, becomes plus stress. If it is um, the final syllable, if it is if it is the only syllable in the word, then, then that one or if it is the penult, if it is heavy, or it is it could be the uh, antepenult if um, if the penult is light. So the rule uh, where the syllable gets stress, the syllable goes to plus stress if um, uh, in these three within these three bracketed positions, uh, the word has seeped. Um, uh, has seeped into English as well. So, um, probably as a result of massive influx of loan words la from Latin. The rule also works when applied to the native words because the native words are so short. Where the penult is a light syllable, we normally get antepenultimate stress in words of at least three syllables. So, um, this is English and you can see that in English in, mo in, in this word it is regiment or Canada or America or accident or Los Angeles or animal or capital. Okay. So, where the penult is light, which is the penult, this is the penult here. So, this is the final, this is the penult, this is the antepenult. If the penult is light, if this is light, then the antepenult gets a stress. So, in similarly, in all these cases where the penult is light, then here again penult is light, then the preceding one, preceding syllable which is marked in red is bears the stress. So, again this is light. And um, again, this is light. So, 
So, P is light, N is light, J is light, C is light, R is light, N is light and J is light. So, uh, the, the light syllables as we know are the C V syllables and whenever there is a light penult, then the antipenult gets the stress and uh, in words of at least three syllables. Where the penult is closed and is thus heavy, so where the penult is closed, let us see, look at the penult is closed examples, then it attracts stress. So, as you can recall, this is pretty much like a classical Arabic. So, um, as in suspension or ejective or consonantal, con uh, um, consonantal and um, columbus and um, dialectal and appendix, which I am of course exaggerating the stress uh, syllable. So, uh, appendix or dialectal or columbus or consonantal or adjective or suspension. So, um, similar to Arabic then, if the penult is heavy, it attracts stress. If the penult is light, the antipenult gets the, uh, uh, stress. When the penult is a long vowel or diphthong and is therefore heavy, it attracts the stress. So, we have Oklahoma and Argentina and simulation and opponent and altoona. And disyllables are ordinarily initially stressed and monosyllables are also stressed. So, we have vivid and tennis and ketchup and onion and pickle and bubble and proton concept and of course, these are monosyllables which are bat, sack, moat and spot. So, they are all stressed. And now, we have uh, come to the end of our discussion on syllable weight and we have seen how English sort of is similar to classical Arabic. If it is uh, monosyllables, then uh, the only um, uh, vowel will get the stress in, uh, we are talking about content words, not function words. Function words will still not have stress because it will need another content word to lean on. If you remember from the initial, um, uh, in initial part of this lecture. And then disyllables are ordinarily initially stressed and monosyllables are also stressed. So, both monosyllables and disyllables you can just similar, you can assume, but there are other stress rules in English. These, these are the most um, common ones. Generally, if this is disyllable, it is always the first syllable. It is like concept or proton or bubble or pickle or onion or ketchup or tennis or vivid. When we have three syllables, then we have a bit more of a complexity. What is the complexity if, um, if um, the penult is a light syllable, we get antipenultimate stress in words of at least three syllables. So, three syllables, if we have C, V, C, V, C in English, just like classical Arabic, we have a bit more of a complexity. If where the penult is a light syllable, this one if it is light, the one in between, the one which is next to the final syllable, if it is light, then the antipenult will get the stress in words of at least three syllables or also four syllables. So, we have capital and animal and um, Los Angeles and accident and America and Canada and regiment. So, and again, when where the penult is closed and thus is heavy, it attracts the stress. And these are all your examples like suspension and ejective and consonantal and Columbus and dialectal and appendix. So, these are your stress rules in English that if there are two syllables, if a disyllabic word, the initial is always stressed, the complexities emerge when there are longer syllables. If the penult is a light syllable, then the stress is on the antepenult. If the penult is heavy, as in these examples, they are always stress. And we saw a similar, uh, this was similar to classical Ar Arabic where also, if the penult is a light syllable, the antepenult gets the stress. 
if the penult is closed and heavy, it attracts the stress. So, um, now we um, come to the end of this lecture on stress and uh, where we showed that there are stress rules, of phonological rules in English and when an underlying form comes to the derivation, it comes without the stress rules. Stress rules are applied as a result of the application of phonological rules. Thank you for your attention. We will look at more aspects of suprasegmental phonology in the next few classes and before we wrap up this course. Thank you for your attention again.